always see the universe exactly as it is. So there was a college admissions director and his job was to greet all of the new students and kind of get them started with their admissions papers at the university he worked at. And so this college admissions director kind of had a routine for students that were coming in transferring from other schools. And basically when they would come in, he would have a certain way that he would respond to them when they arrived. And so uh, one new student came to this university and met with the college admissions director. He said, hey, you know, I'm uh, transferring from my old college to this college and uh, I just want to know uh, what is what are the people like here? What are the students like at, at this new college that I'm transferring to? And so the college admissions director asked, well, what were the students like at the last college that you came from? And the new student said, well, they were quite awful, to be frank. The reason I'm moving here is to get away from all of the toxicity and the, the backbiting. There's so much gossip. And just ultimately, it was an environment that I just needed to get away from. So I'm really looking forward to a fresh start here. And the college admissions director said, well, I think you'll find the people here are just the same as they were at your last school. Into this, the student was quite dismayed, but he went on his way. And later on, the same day, another student came in and asked the same question of the college admissions director. He said, you know, I'm, I'm transferring from uh, my old college. I'm transferring here. I'm just wondering, what are the students like here at the new college? I want to know what to expect. And the college admissions director asked the new student, well, what were the students like at your old college? And the new student said, they were amazing. I loved them. I had uh, so many friends there and uh, really I felt so at home. I, I wish I didn't have to transfer, uh, but it's just circumstances outside of my control uh, that have led me to have to come here. And the college admissions director said to him, you will find the people here are just the same as they were at your last school. Why does the college admissions director respond the same way to both of these students when both of these students had different types of experiences at their last school. One, stu one student said he hated the people, they were terrible. The other student said he loved the people, they were wonderful. Why? Why does the college admissions director always answer it the same way? Well, because he realizes that the way that a student really will see the faculty and, and, and student body will be based on the way they tend to see people because they have shown that they tend to see people in a negative light, then they will continue to tend to see people in negative light. But if they tend to see people in a positive light, then they will continue to see people in a positive light. And this is called uh, bias or confirmation bias, where we tend to see more of whatever it is we are looking for. Like, for instance, if I told you to scan my background right now uh, for, <laughs> for everything that is natural, and I give you four seconds, one, two, three, four, good. So now you have a list of a few things that are natural or made of natural ingredients. But if I ask you now to close your eyes and name all of the artificial ingredients, suddenly all of the artificial things, suddenly your mind stops and doesn't have as long of a list. Not because there are less artificial things, but because that's not what you were looking for. Therefore, that's not what you found. Right. And this is how our mind works. The reticular activating system is always scanning the environment for exactly what it's told to look for. But when we experience trauma, then our system is always looking for the next danger, the next thing to go wrong. As a result, we're not seeing the universe exactly as it is. We're seeing it through our filter, through our bias. And this is going to be a negativity bias. Trauma survivors have distorted perception that leads them to cognitive distortions, black and white thinking, catastrophizing, 
overgeneralization, and that colors their interpretation of events. It colors their interpretation of situations. It colors their interpretation of relationships so that it makes it difficult to accurately assess the world around them. They do not see the universe as it truly is. But right now, we are learning the laws of healing. And, the, and in the 12 laws of the healed mindset is law number, ooh, I think it's six. Let's see, is Petra in the room? She, she's on top of these laws here. Yes. If you guys can let me know, yeah, we're in law number six. Always see the universe exactly as it is. Always, thank you so much, Petra. Always see the universe exactly as it is based on evidence. So if we're seeing the universe exactly as it is, then we can't allow ourselves to be guided by black and white thinking, overgeneralization, right, catastrophizing. All of those things are trauma responses. That's trauma filter. That's us not seeing the universe as it is, but seeing the universe from a bias because we're trying to keep ourselves safe. For many trauma survivors, they have what's called hypervigilance. So they're always scanning their environment for the next thing to go wrong, and they're always scanning your body language. So as soon as you make a face, as soon as you shift in your chair, they're on top of it. What is that? What do you mean? What? What's the problem? Right? That's hypervigilance. Hypervigilance is trauma response because they're in that heightened state of alertness, constantly scanning the environment for danger. But that actually makes it challenging to perceive their universe accurately because they're really just in the negative, always thinking the worst, always fearing the worst. But that's not how the universe actually is. It's not always the worst. So if you're always scanning for the worst, you're actually missing the beauty of the universe. You're missing the, the complexity and the interesting things. You're missing, you're missing the love of the universe. There's people around you who don't have bad intentions, but you can't even give them a moment of your time or attention because you're so focused on not getting caught by the next danger because you have this belief that there has to be another danger. Someone has to have bad intention. Something is going to go wrong. Also, when we have emotional dysregulation, because we're, we're having trouble keeping our emotions at bay, we find ourselves guided by the emotions. So now fear is your leader and your master. Sadness and pain and anger are your leaders and your master. And they become so intense and overwhelming and you don't know how to regulate it that it actually clouds your judgment and impairs your ability to perceive in, uh, situations with clarity and objectivity. You're failing to see your universe exactly as it is based on evidence. A lot of times we have negative core beliefs from the very start. This is because in childhood, we were taught negative core beliefs. You may have had a parent that literally taught you, you cannot trust anyone outside of this house. It's very dangerous out there. It's a dangerous world out there. And whereas that could be helpful to a degree, the parent emphasized that so much that it actually debilitated you. It can debilitate your ability to grow, to individuate, to go out and make progress, set goals, believe in yourself because you're living in fear and terror. Some narcissistic mothers do this to their daughters to chop the daughter's legs off figuratively so that the daughter will always stay under them. And it works. Many daughters are afraid to leave home because of all of the terrible stories their mother has told them. These types of engulfing mothers will uh, keep their daughters stuck in this feeling of helplessness and inability to move forward. And eventually the daughters will, in their efforts to be perfect, deprive themselves to the point where they end up doing what I call the rubber band effect. When you stretch one way too hard, eventually the rubber band snaps 
So then they snap the other direction and then they go out and they do something promiscuous and then they get pregnant before they were really ready to plant a family. And then they show up and now they're like, oh, you had a baby and you got this, this guy that you went running off with. And now I'm going to reinforce all my negative things about how terrible the world is and how terrible you are. And now they're just caught in this perpetual cycle. And now the engulfing mother wants to continue to take over not only this daughter, but the children that the daughter has. As a result, the daughter never actually individuated or grew to learn to understand how the universe really is, that she really is capable, that she really could be successful, that she could really do it on her own, that she could plan her own family, that she can take care of her own children. All because she was fed these negative core beliefs. That's just one example of negative core beliefs. You know, just the, just the idea that everyone is out to get you. These things can can hinder you from seeing the universe as it really is. The idea that you can't trust anyone, that's a negative core beliefs. I trust no one. It sounds strong. It sounds smart. But if you really analyze it, it's not smart. It's not smart. It doesn't take a smart person to lob off all human beings and just say, no one can be trusted. That's, there's nothing smart about that. It's, it's lacking the ability to process nuance and accept the humanity as it really is. That's, that's not the smartest way of going about keeping yourself safe. And we'll talk about how, how you can do this. But, but I want to just, just make sure I'm, I'm illustrating the plight of the trauma survivor when they give in to the effects of the trauma. They allow the trauma to change them. This is your meeting to wake up and realize, I can't allow trauma to define me. I can't allow trauma to define the way that I see the world around me. Some trauma survivors become avoidant in their behaviors. And it's a way of coping with the difficult feelings, the difficult memories, the difficult triggers. So they avoid people or they avoid places or they avoid situations associated with the trauma. But the avoidance limits their exposure to the outside world. It limits their exposure to diverse perception, uh, perspectives and diverse experiences. It hinders their ability to grow and see the world from different viewpoints. Uh, so an avoidant person is locked once again, and not being able to see the world as it truly is. They think that what keeps them safe is just distraction and avoidance. But that's not it. So how can we make sure that we're able to see the universe as it truly is? Well, in order to do this, we'll have to address what some of your core beliefs are that's been holding you back from being able to see the universe exactly as it is according to evidence. I will tell you, if you can see the universe exactly as it is, it's like having a superpower. It's like being able to walk on water or being able to fly. Because when you know the way the universe really is, you don't walk around with undue fear. And when you don't have fear, then you're not paralyzed. You can do anything, you can go anywhere, you can talk to anyone. Because you see the universe the way it really is, you're not often fooled although you can be surprised, but even the surprises don't surprise you because you understand that, of course, there are things in the universe that you don't know and can't expect because you see the universe exactly as it is. When I say the universe, I'm just talking about the world around you, everything that is outside of the self. That is your universe, your friends, your family, your job, your community, politics, the news, the universe. Also, the laws that kind of govern things underneath the surface. That is the universe. What? How is the way things really work? And what you'll find is that in the universe, trying to preemptively fear the trauma before the trauma occurs to fear the bad thing before the bad thing occurs doesn't actually keep you safe. It just keeps you in a heightened state 
of anxiety, which depletes the energy reserves in your body, takes it away from your immune system. So then your physical health goes down. The high anxiety means then your mental health goes down. It keeps you in a constant state of anxiousness, of fear. And then you don't have what you need to be able to cope when something bad really does happen, which is the minority of the time. Uh, actually, with a client today, I was just discussing how often, you know, you actually are in a traumatic situation. Once you're an adult and you're out of the abusive home, when you're no longer living with an abuser, how often are you actually in a dangerous life or death situation? Because you're constantly locking your bedroom and doing all these things based on your trauma. But how often are you actually in danger? If we, if we look at the universe the way it really is, in one year there are 365 days. How many of those days on average are you actually in a life or death, scary, dangerous, being attacked type situation? Well, you will find that even if five days a year you are actually in a situation like that, that means that 360 days Per year, you're safe. Just let that sink for a moment. 360 days per year, you are safe. The vast majority of the time, you are safe. So it really does you no good to constantly be worried that it's one of the five days. It's actually better to enjoy your 360 peaceful, safe days. And then when one of the five unsafe days comes up, then you'll have the energy and the reserves and the cortisol left to be able to deal with it. Your adrenal glands won't be over, <laughs> overused. So you'll have the adrenaline you need to be able to overcome the actual situation when it occurs. So what are your negative core beliefs or cognitive distortions that are leading you to see the universe through trauma? One example of this is generalizing or generalization. Generalization is the, the practice or the tendency to see the world in generalities rather than in specific scenarios. So when something bad happens to us, for instance, because it was someone from a particular group, maybe they were tall or maybe they were black or maybe they were a man, then we take that group and we generalize. All tall people can't be trusted. All black people can't be trusted. All men cannot be trusted. It's very popular right now on social media to generalize uh, based on gender stereotypes. There's one disturbing discussion about uh, women saying that they would feel more safe on a deserted island with a wild bear than they would feel with a random man. This is a great example of generalization because some men are bad or because you've had experiences that are bad with men, you've allowed your lack of safety to go all the way to the point of generalization to where now, without even analyzing statistically, how that situation would make sense. You would actually put yourself or your daughter in a real dangerous situation. Rather than actually taking the time to analyze, wait a second, what percentage of men actually are more dangerous than a wild bear? The reality is, if we were on a deserted island or in the wilderness alone, we would be thrilled <laughs> to find another human there. And chances are, chances are that human that we found there, whatever gender, chances are that person would be prone to be helpful more so than prone to harm you, being that you're the only other human there. All that being said, 
do you see the universe the way it really is? Or do you want to take a generalization because it's easier, it's quicker, it's emotional, and you've been through trauma? We have to see the, the universe the way it actually is. You live in a world where, yes, there are dangerous people. There are dangerous men, absolutely. But it's not 90% of men are dangerous. That's not, <laughs> that's not accurate. You have to see the universe the way it really is. Most men and most women would try to help someone if they saw someone in danger. That's, that's, that's what statistically is accurate. Most would not try to harm the individual. That wouldn't be the first reaction. So we have to watch the generalizing. It's done against both men and women on the internet, right? And these are popular discussions. Sometimes they can be fun. Sometimes they can be funny. But we need to be honest with ourselves. Am I allowing myself to just generalize? Because, because the generalization is going to get you in trouble because you're failing to process nuance. Nuance is the subtle difference in shade or meaning. The subtle differences in shade or meaning. Meaning you're, you're not analyzing each situation, each individual as an individual. So if you're walking around the world thinking that your fellow humans are more dangerous than actual grizzly bears or whatever, then you have a perception of the world that is inaccurate. And that just leads you to more anxiety, more fear. If you're walking around the world believing that because your mother abused you or because your wife uh, was abusive, that therefore now all women are liars or all women are gold diggers and opportunists, then you're not seeing the universe exactly as it truly is. You're just taking your experiences and now you're projecting something that you think will make you feel better or keep you safe. But in reality, you're generalizing. So listen carefully to me. Generalizing is cognitive distortion. Meaning it's a distorted way of thinking. So for all who say, no, 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 you don't understand. You don't understand my, my experience. You're invalidating the experiences of, of women. You're invalidating my experience as a man who has been abused by a woman. I'm not invalidating anything. Generalizing is cognitive distortion. You're invalidating your own intelligence by relying on a simple generalization to be your guide in life. Life ain't that simple. You need to process nuance. Every individual needs to be taken on an individual basis. There are certainly humans that are more dangerous than a bear, but that's a small percentage. You need to take each individual on an individual basis. You meet a person, don't assume that they're the worst. Assume that you don't know. Don't assume that you can read their mind assume that you cannot the proper way to look at a person is i don't know what they are i don't know who they are i don't know what they're thinking i cannot read their mind i can simply gather information and ask questions and gradually assess the situation and gradually increase my trust as is necessary and appropriate for this individual relationship. That's the only accurate and adaptive way to, to go through the world. It's I don't know. What will be helpful to our to our mental health is to assume the best rather than assuming the worst. Rather than assuming that everyone is a, ser a serial killer, it's better to just assume that most people are good. Why would that be better? That doesn't seem like it keeps us safe. Well, actually, it does. When we assume positive things, when we assume the best, we get the best out of people. That's for one, right? 
how, how good of a performance does a person get out of you when they tell you right away that they assume you're a failure? Does that give you get a good performance out of you? <laughs> it helps when people assume the best of you, right? When they assume that they could trust you. Don't you act in a more trustworthy manner when someone makes you feel trusted? The answer is yes. We're all like that. That's how we're, that's how we're wired as humans. So you do better when you walk through the world showing more of a positive disposition towards your fellow humans. You actually get a better result from your fellow humans. Not to mention you're going to feel better because you're living in the positive, which is a closer match to how reality really is. If we suffer from black and white thinking, this is extreme thinking or dichotomous thinking, then we're not seeing the world as it truly is. One girl I spoke to said, I try to please my parents and do everything they want me to do, but it makes me feel like I'm losing myself. And sometimes I become so stressed that I feel like I want to kill myself. Okay. I said to her, so you're telling me that the number one most important thing is to please your parents, to cause them no distress. She said, yes. And you feel that way all the way to the point of wanting to kill yourself. You she said, yes. I said, what would be more displeasing to your parents than doing that? I said to her, isn't it ironic that your only alternative to pleasing them totally is to doing the most painful, most displeasing most traumatizing thing you could possibly do to them? And she said, wow, I never thought of it like that. That's the problem. We're not taking the time to analyze things. In order to get out of black and white thinking, we have to stop uh, generalizing. I'm sorry, we have to start um, in order to get out of black and white thinking, we need to start looking at things using critical thinking. We need to use critical thinking to get out of black and white thinking. The ability to analyze the data, to process the details of the situation. Critical thinking. Another thing that keeps us from seeing the world the, really, the, world the way it really is, is should statements. When we go, oh, I should already have a car by now. I should already have a wife by now. I should already have children by now. We're making up fake rules and we're not seeing the universe as it truly is. So we have to stop making should statements. Or I guess I could say you should stop saying should. It's not the word that's the problem. It's just the constant implication that you're always wrong how you are as, as you are at the moment. It's the constant making up of rules that don't really exist and then punishing yourself for not living up to those rules. Cut it out. Should statements are not helping you to become more successful. They're beating you up for the things you haven't accomplished or achieved. When the reality is certain, certain things are just out of your control. When the reality is those things are not real rules. And in reality, no one has everything. So there will always be something you can say you wish you should be having at this point. Cut it out. It's not helping. We need to see the universe the way it truly is, which means to recognize that we don't make the rules. And there are no rules saying that we have to have achieved something by a certain point. Trauma survivors that feel like everyone is always judging them are not seeing the universe the way it truly is. I would like to let you in on the truth of what everyone's really thinking. And it's not that you're short or you're fat or you're ugly. It's not that your hair looks bad. That's not what everyone's, they're not thinking, oh, you really broke out today. You're having a really bad breakout on your face. That's not what everyone's thinking. If you want to know the truth of what everyone's thinking, it's something about themselves. That's, that's what people generally, if you're wondering, nine out of 10 of the people in the room that you're with are not thinking about you, they're thinking about them. And if they are thinking about you, they're thinking about how you might be thinking about them. So you can relax. Everyone's not judging. 
They don't have time. By the way, you'll feel less judgmental when you become less judgmental because we really project our minds onto the minds of others, meaning we believe we know what they're thinking based on how we think. When you stop judging others, all of a sudden you won't feel like people are judging you. And that's because you're not judgmental. So why would you assume someone's judging you? You assume they're not. And then when you assume they're not, you act free as if you're not being judged. And people say, wow, I appreciate how that person is just totally themselves. I wish I was more like that because they're thinking about them. So let it go. The world does not revolve around you. Everyone is not judging you. Even if they were, it doesn't matter because doesn't matter. <laughs> what can they do? Nothing. Many trauma survivors, because they're taught as children, or maybe they had bad experiences, they feel like the world is a dark and scary place, and they can't trust anyone. The reality is, uh, we definitely live on a planet that is a lot darker and more dystopian than it should be. There are definitely people that we cannot trust. There are definitely situations that are out of control. But you will find generally what you are looking for. And so if you are looking for peace and you are looking for goodness, if you believe in peace and you believe in goodness, you will generally find more peace and more goodness. If you limit your intake of negative media, true crime stories, criminology, uh, watching the news. You limit that intake, that media intake of negative. Here's all the worst that's happening in the world. Right? That's what modern news is, right? They're never, they're not like, man, we have so much good stuff to tell you about that's happening. No, they say, welcome to the news. Here are the worst things we could find happening on the planet. And then they, they just hit, start hitting you with it. Well, believe it or not, although it seems like you're abreast of what you need to be abreast of, it's actually toxic to sit around taking in a constant 24-hour feed of all of the worst things that are happening in the universe. Um, when you step outside your door, you will find generally a lot of positivity. So please, instead of viewing the world as a dark and scary place, view yourself as capable of handling what is coming your way, as savvy. Take proper precautions, lock your doors, wear your seatbelts, but enjoy your life because you have the greatest influence over what your future will be. And that's viewing the universe as it truly is. Well, that was a really hard hitting uh, talk today. I appreciate all of your support and all the supportive comments that came in. Some of you may want to talk with me, you may feel like, you know, it'd be nice to just sit down and have a conversation with that guy, pick his brain, tell him about my thoughts and feelings and my problems, things I'm going through. Well, it just so turns out that is actually humanly possible. I have space on my schedule next week to take new clients who would like their opportunity to have a session with me. All you have to do is go to the website, mindfreed.org and book your session you can also send me a text message if you don't find a time there that's going to work out for you my number is also on that website mindfreed.org it's in the profile page on my tiktok profile 